I am standing right here outside the temporarily closed visitor center, but not a very well known one. This closed visitor center is just to the east of the city center, outside one of Melbourne's most bizarre tourist attractions. This is Out of Isolation, the daily web series where we come to you and share all the things that are great about our city so you don't need to go outside uh, yourself. And today, I'm here to show you two bizarre uh, things, bizarre tourist attractions that I'd never heard about until quite recently, even though they are one of the top visited sites in Melbourne. Captain Cook is a controversial figure, has become a more controversial figure here in Australia as time has gone on. Gone on. Up until, uh, he arrives to, Mel to Australia in 1770, doesn't come to Melbourne. He has nothing to do with Melbourne. Melbourne comes almost 50 years after Sydney begins. He goes to Sydney and Botany Bay. But when Australia tells its story, it tells the story of Captain Cook. Nowadays, during Australia Day, the holiday on the 26th of January, it becomes a bit of a controversial date about whether we should celebrate this date in particular. And even a couple years ago, the statue of Captain Cook was vandalized on Australia Day uh, down in St. Kilda. What I'm at right now is it was built long before any of that controversy began. Uh, and what I'm at right now is Captain Cook's Cottage. Right behind me is one of the older tourist sites in Melbourne, erected in 1934. Well, it was erected in the 20th century, even though the original building was built in the 18th century. You see, Melbourne starts in 1835. Um, and so in in 1935, 100 years after, they wanted to think of a way to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Melbourne. And so what better way than to go back to Scotland, find Captain Cook's ancestral home, and rebuild it anew here in Melbourne. This is a brick for brick, not even a reconstruction, they took all the bricks off, numbered them, brought them down to Melbourne, and in 1934, this opened. Now why was it 1934, not the 100th anniversary of 1935? Because there's some debate about whether they're celebrating the city of Melbourne, Melbourne's beginning or Port Phillip's uh, beginning, the Principality of Port Phillip, which is a sub-region of New South Wales. This was all long before Victoria became a colony and then later a state. And so what you have right over here is a tourist attraction, which you can go into even today. You spend, oh, it's about five bucks. Let's say this much money. I'll put it right there on the screen. Uh, that's how much you spend to go inside Captain Cook's cottage. Now, it's only a few rooms in there, uh, but you do have a volunteer with the city of Melbourne who's quite knowledgeable and will tell you all about it. You can see the statue of Captain Cook. You can go to the garden in the back, and you can even try on some old timey outfits on a clothes rack, which is usually sitting there when the building is uh, not closed closed as it is right now for coronavirus. In fact, when Hugo and I came here recently, uh, Hugo decided to really get amongst it and dress up. Let's put his picture right over there. Hugo, you're going to love me for this. Um, and so you can have a lot of fun coming and dressing up here. But today, what is this used for? This is primarily used for package tours. So if you're on a bus tour company or on a cruise ship and you only have a very limited amount of time in Melbourne, let's say you have a day in Melbourne on your cruise uh, or you're on a tour bus and you're on a 14 day tour of all of Australia, they might send you to Cook's Cottage because Melbourne, while being an amazing city, is not the most accessible city for tour buses. There's not a lot of places to park the buses and myself, I used to be a tour guide on tour buses in Europe. I know all too well some of the logistical challenges that come with having to bring 50 people into a strange new city for lunch. It doesn't really work very well. And so just as kind of a function of practicality, a lot of tour buses will park in the uh, free bus parking that's just over this way. They'll walk into these gardens, which are Fitzroy Gardens, by the way, and they'll let people go explore Cook's Cottage for a little bit. It's something that is not, would not have been my top destination to come to if I was listening to my top five places to go to, but when I finally did get around to seeing it, I was really glad that I did. Number one, the volunteers were incredibly friendly and incredibly knowledgeable uh, when I went there. Number two, playing dress up is always fun. And number three, I work in tourism. And so by definition, I'm interested in tourism. And it just kind of blows me away to think about the age of this industry. It's so easy for me to think about my job as being unique to right now. But even in 1934, people, tourists were coming to explore Cook's Cottage. So that's the first weird tourist site I wanna show you. The second weird tourist site that I want to show you is the Miniature Tudor Village. Now, this is a village uh, which 
Uh, it was made uh, to look like an English village. It's uh, made uh, from, uh, given to us by the city of Lambeth, which is one of the cities that make up London today. Uh, and it was given in the late 1940s to thank Melbourne for its support during World War II. Melbourne gave food to Britain um, during the Battle of Britain. As a result, we have this weird little tourist attraction here of these tiny Tudor houses um, that are, I don't know, just strange. Um, in fact, they are here. So here we have our miniature Tudor village. It used to be that you could actually walk through the pathway, not anymore. And the thing that I find really cool about this is it actually is having a bit of a resurgence right now thanks to the Untitled Goose Game. If you don't know what this is, you need to change your life. Go download this game. What better time than in isolation? It's a game where you play as a goose and you wander through an English countryside town and you just be a jerk. The whole point of the game is that the, you as a goose have to go steal this poor gardener's broom. Well, the big finale of the game takes place in a miniature Tudor village. And the fact of the matter is that the development team that made Untitled Goose Game, they're from Melbourne. One of the most popular, successful video games in the world right now was made right here in Melbourne, and I have to think that they were inspired by the Tudor Village. That's not confirmed, by the way. I'll write out to them and ask after I do this video and say, I'll let you know if uh, they have an answer. But in the meantime, the Tudor Village and Cook's Cottage make up two of the most bizarre tourist attractions here in Melbourne, but still worth your time to explore once we are all out of isolation. Uh, my name is John. I'm a tour guide with Walks 101, one of the many people who finds himself out of work at this time. And this is a daily web show where I try to show you the parts of the city that you can't come to right now. If you've enjoyed it, please click like or subscribe or share or just interact with the video in some way. It will help out a whole lot and I will see you tomorrow.